listen, I feel like I've reached a place in these videos where now I need some sort of uh, uh, disclaimers, if you will. So one, you can't really see me, but I'm wearing my mask and wearing my glasses. Take care of yourselves. So let's be safe while we're doing this work. I am not a teacher. I'm learning as we go, and I'm posting these videos for free so that maybe you can learn along with me. Successes and failures. On these recent videos, I'm trying to post um, in the description, which sometimes on the video, if there's a little, if you're on your phone, there's a little arrow and that shows you the video description. You can find it on YouTube as well, or Google it if you don't know how to find the description. But what I do is I post links to some of the products that I use and the types of glass that I'm using and uh, you know my firing schedules. And on that, everybody's firing schedule is different. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work. I'm sharing the successes and the failures and I'm sharing those with you as a starting place. Let's have a lot of fun. If you enjoy these videos, subscribe. I'm trying to post a couple of month now, uh, often, more. And so uh, hit that subscribe button and, and follow along. Have fun, everybody. Hey there, it's Jameson, and I am going to do a little experimenting today. So I thought let's turn on the camera and learn together. Today, I am going to try pot melts for the first time. I've never done this before. And uh, I thought <clears throat> I'm going to go for, I'm not going for perfection on this first one, I'm going for learning. So what I'm going to do is I have three of these pots. These are made in Italy. <clears throat> I know that there's some uh, conversation online about which pots to use. I've, I've read made in Italy, made in USA, or okay, stay away from made in Mexico or made in China. So anyway, <clears throat> these that I got, <coughs> excuse me, these that I got are from I bought these at Lowe's, and they're made in Italy, um, Pennington brand. These are the smaller ones, though. These were four-inch. They had six-inch pots that were made in the USA. Most of the stuff, in fact, was made in the USA. These four-inchers were made in Italy, and some of the saucers that they had were made in Italy. Um, went to Home Depot, kind of same story. Almost everything was made in the USA. Same brand, even. They just carry the same stuff. Those were the only two stores I checked out. So what I'm going to do is these little holes are, are too small, so I'm going to drill those holes out. Um, Got to take the stickers off. Don't you hate when stickers do this? So what I'm going to do is um, drill these holes out. I've got just my standard drill. I happen to have a, a diamond bit. I don't have any masonry bits, so I have this diamond core bit. So I'm just going to use that and go right through here and drill out some holes. I'm going to make um, three of these and make them a little bit bigger. I'm going to wear my mask when I do it. I put it in a bin here just to kind of catch all the, the dust and crap that comes. And so um, let me get these stickers off and then drill these out and I'll take you to the next step. Well, <clears throat> I intended to show that whole process to you only to find out that I didn't have my video running. <laughs> so, um, oops, well, I'm not gonna do it again. So uh, I got three holes out of this. Uh, I'll be honest, that was, and you would have seen this, that was a little harder than I, than I first thought. So I used my, these are the bits that I have. Um, diamond drill bits <coughs> that I bought. Excuse me. Gosh, I'm all choked up today. Um, Babin, Babin brand. I bought these on Amazon. They were super cheap. Uh, I may have ruined this one. I don't know. There's still, no, I can use it for future pots. I think there's a fair amount of texture on there. Um, problem that I was having was this bit was jumping around a lot and I've read this tip before. I just haven't used it too much. You know, you start at an angle, so you have to kind of go in an angle, get a real groove, and then rock up and then apply your force and, and go straight down. So you, that I found finally worked better for me once I started applying that principle. Um, I still had trouble with it jumping around, but it, this isn't glass, it's clay pot and I didn't really care um, too much if it were glass. Clearly I'd need to practice that technique a lot more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these cleaned up and then I'll uh, show you what I'm doing next as part of my experiment. Okay, so I wiped these down with a dry paper towel just to get most of the dust out, and then I dampened the paper towel and wiped them out to get the dust out. And here's what I'm going to do. This is going to blow your mind. <laughs> um, you know, you read so many absolutes uh, on Facebook. You should never do this. You should never do that. You should always do this. Um, that never works. And I, I think that life is about figuring some things out on your own. And so um, that's what I intend to do a lot of times in these videos. Now, I will certainly take the guidance of uh, others. There are professionals out there who know exactly what they're doing that have been doing this for decades. Um, <clears throat> and so I will absolutely look to other firing schedules for inspiration, other rules of thumb, but sometimes where there's a lot of um, disparity in the advice, I figured I should just try it myself. And so here's what I'm gonna do, and I'm trying this myself. Uh, and you can watch and see how it works so that maybe you don't have to try it for yourself. Never done a pot melt before. 
But the advice, the predominant advice seems to be to either let the pot drip down directly onto your kiln shelf, a kiln washed shelf, don't use paper. I've explored that back and forth online. It sounds like thin fire and <clears throat> papyrus, you know, will release too many fibers. Um, you could do like a uh, eighth inch fiber paper if you want, or just do it directly on a kiln shelf. Or if you want to use papyrus or something like that underneath, um, put a put a uh, sheet of Tecta in as your base glass, if you will, to kind of catch that. That has some promise, although I don't know that I want to use Tecta that way all the time. So it kind of depends on what I'm going to work on. But the other, so that so that's one standard piece of advice. Uh, another one is to never kiln wash your mold. You're going to get glass stuck in it, and that's okay, your pots. You're going to get glass stuck in these, and that's okay. You'll just reuse them. That glass will become part of the future piece. And I, I understand, fully understand and appreciate why that advice exists. But I'm still going to try it anyway, <laughs> just because I want to learn. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up uh, my kiln melt and I'm going to do three of these side by side in the same pot melt. This could end up being a big disaster as I say this out loud, but this is what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to do three of these. One, I'm going to do just like that. I'm not going to do anything to it. The second one, I'm going to put some kiln wash in. And the third one, I'm going to spray some boron nitride, some zip product. But here's the caveat. And everybody's kind of going, oh man, this is going to make a mess. And it may, it, it absolutely might. I'm gonna use black glass, which is also a no-no in pot melt because black takes over the color, but that's okay because I'm not doing this for any kind of design. I don't intend to use this. This is gonna go straight into the trash because I just wanna learn from it. And so I figured the black is gonna show everything. If I pick up kiln wash in this process, the black's gonna show it. If I pick up zip, the black's gonna show it for sure. So that's why I'm gonna use black in these. And instead of just applying the zip, for instance, I have to, I, I've yet to decide on the kiln wash, so I haven't, I haven't fully thought this through on what I want to do with the kiln wash version, but on the zip version, I'm going to apply the zip and I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to wipe it out and I'm going to try to maybe even rinse it out and get rid of some of the zip so that there's not kind of a layer or residue and I'm going to see if that happens to have sealed enough of this without giving me residue in there. So um, more on that in a little bit. That's my approach. So one's going to be blank, one I'm going to kiln wash, and one I'm going to zip the inside. I'll go do that and we'll be back. Okay, so you saw me chop up all my glass. This is not a lot of black scrap. I don't know, maybe you considered a lot about a black scrap. It's about a pound and 14 ounces. So less than two pounds across these uh, three pots. Maybe it is a lot, but you know what? You're worth it. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing this for me and I'm just recording it for you. Um, but anyway, this is uh, the black scrap. So again, I've got my control. Uh, I did spray one of these with kiln wash and I sprayed one of these with zip. And then here's what I did. I went ahead and took just a dry paper towel and wiped off the kiln wash and blew it back out so that it was relatively dust free. And I did the same with the zip. I wiped it with the towel, although I don't think a lot came out and it feels nice and, and glossy and kind of stuck in there. So I don't know, we'll just, that's what zip does. So we'll see what happens with it. I decided not to wash it out. I was just gonna use a dry towel and see what happens. So uh, let me go show you what the kiln setup itself looks like. Okay, I know this looks complex and kind of convoluted, um, but it's gonna work. Uh, so I've got the kiln shelf underneath directly. There's no paper there. Um, I've got a couple of supports and then um, the pots are going to run down the middle. I realize I say um a lot in these videos, so my apologies for that. Because it's only two pounds of glass, I don't expect it to go very far, but I wanted a little bit of insurance, and I did not have kiln-washed posts. Those posts are not kiln-washed, but I did have an old kiln shelf that had been cut up a long time ago. That's where I got all these supports for and dams and stuff. So I cut up that old kiln shelf, and they've just been laying around these pieces. So I did kind of angle a piece of kiln shelf in front of the post 
just in case I get a lot of flow, then it's not gonna hit that post that's not been washed. I didn't wanna get the wash out and mess around with all that again, because I just put it away. Um, and then I put some supports, uh, some, some extra protection, some extra insurance around each side to give me this kind of circular area in the middle that um, the glass can pour into. I'm confident I'm gonna get kind of three blobs that run together in the middle, and I don't think it's gonna touch any of these edges, but just a little bit of insurance is not a bad thing because I certainly don't want this running all over and ruining my my kiln. The, the, it's, it's less than two pounds glass. Again, this isn't gonna go very far, but I was having fun. It's like a Lego set. Okay, here we go. I've got the pots loaded up. So again, as a reminder, the one on the left has nothing in it. It's my control. In the middle, we have kiln wash that's been wiped out with a dry paper towel. And on the right, we have zip that was well applied and then given a wipe with a paper towel. <sighs> okay, so I weighed these to try to make sure the glass was evenly distributed because I'm also gonna be interested to see how much of the glass comes out of each one. I couldn't get them quite equal. So the one on the left, my control, has 19.4 and the one on the right, my zip also has 19.4, and the one in the middle has 19.6. So 19.4, 19.6, and 19.4. That's the total weight, not the glass, but the total weight, including the pot. So when these come out, I'll weigh the pots again and see how much of the glass stayed in each one. I'm gonna fire this up to 1700 degrees, hold it for, I've seen a lot of schedules that say 90 minutes. I may go two hours, just cause, and then, uh, then I'll hold it again at 1500 on the way down. I'll post the schedule. We'll see what this turns out like. Okay, I just opened up the kiln. It's still too hot to disassemble here, so we'll take a look in a little bit. Um, the, the black looks pretty decent. The side with the zip clearly has something that dripped into it. We'll take a closer look in a bit. And uh, here's how the pot's emptied out. The one on the left with nothing, and the one in the middle with the kiln wash look almost the same. Maybe a little bit more of the kiln wash one rolled out. Most of the zip one rolled out. Let's let this cool out, cool off, and then we'll break it down and see what it looks like underneath. Okay, so a little more analysis, and let me just show these off now that I can pick them up and they're colder. So this is the, uh, the normal one without any uh, my control, if you will, without any kiln wash or, or zip in it. Um, all three of these uh, finished dripping, if you will. So my schedule might have been good. I didn't have any stringers hanging out. You can see a little bit of a bulb at the bottom. So that's that one. Here's the one with the kiln wash. Kind of looks about the same inside, to be honest. Um, same thing, stopped dripping nicely at the bottom. And then this is the one with zip. Very interesting how much of the glass came out. Now there's still a little bulb thing here at the bottom and there's uh, just a little bit of glass left in there. I haven't even touched it yet. I bet if I touched it um, to try to get it out, it would all fall out pretty, pretty normally. They all gave up um, different amounts of glass, but not too much different, to be honest. The, um, these two, the first one gave up 8.6 ounces of glass. Um, the one with the kiln wash was 8.8. .8, so two tenths of an ounce difference is really not that much. Um, the zip one did empty out almost completely and that one was 9.4 ounces of glass. Here's the surface of the glass before I'm pulling it out of the kiln. You can kind of see there's a little bit of um, devitrification that's happening. Um, you can see puddles of, of um, you know, where the glass came down. There's clearly some bubbles, so I might need to think about future firings and what that would look like. Um, you can see my fingerprints where I touched the glass already, but I haven't even picked it up yet. Um, this is the, the control side, and to the naked eye, it's, it's pretty clean. We'll see what it looks like underneath. This is the kiln wash middle. Same thing. I mean, you can see some of the, the texture in the glass from the, from the bubbles and from the pour, but I don't really see a lot of debris in there. And then this is the side with the zip, and clearly there's some some funk that came out with that. Let's uh, lift this up and see what it looks like underneath. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I'm super disappointed right now <laughs> because um, I did not put, I had, this was a freshly kiln washed shelf and I thought I had enough layers on there, but uh, when I picked up that piece, I've got a little bit of 
just a little bit of debris that's kind of stuck to the shelf. I don't think it's too bad, but I got it. It took a chunk out of my shelf, son of a gun. So I guess it's stuck. Um, wasn't prepared well enough for a um, for a pot melt. I know a lot of the tips and, and tutorials talk about putting a clear sheet of glass down first, and this would be why. Um, and I know opals tend to stick a little bit more. Uh, I'll show you what the bottom of this looks like, but when I first picked this up, I my heart sunk a little bit because now I got to put some work into the shelf. This is an expensive core light shelf, and now I got to divot right in the middle of it. So I'm a little disappointed right now. Okay, and here's the bottom. So uh, I've got some kiln wash stuck to this. There's some texture on here. Here's, um, this is the, the main offender. Now that chunk just came off. You see that? That was my kiln shelf. Son of a gun. There's another little chunk there. So I gotta go back and look at my shelf again. I'm gonna uh, clean this up a little bit and see what we get. Okay, so I clean this up, and from the top, I really can't discern a lot of difference between the um, control and the, the pot that had kiln wash in it. They're virtually identical. I still don't know that I would take a kiln wash approach, though, because it didn't make any difference in the pot. So while kiln wash obviously makes sense on your molds and stuff, in a, in a pot melt, it didn't make any difference. That glass was still stuck in there, so, so why even risk it? Um, on the one with the zip, more of the glass came out. I did try to chip away at that glass. It was stuck in there. What was in there was stuck. Um, so again, you didn't get a fully cleaned difference. And there are these few spots that kind of dripped out. This, uh, these kind of zippy spots, I guess. And so those would need to be cold worked out. But what I did find interesting is that there are a whole lot more micro bubbles. Let's see if I turn this off, if you can see that any better. Look at all those little particularly right here. Can you see that? All those little bubbles that, that formed, those aren't in the other side. There are other bubbles. There are other smaller bubbles in these other two, but not nearly to the extent and the amount that you see uh, on this zip one. So, and then the bottom is the bottom. This would need to be cold work. I'd need to use diamond pads and such to, to kind of clean this up. This is actually just going right into the recycle bin. So I'm not, I'm not even going to, you know, put that effort into it because this was an experiment and I was just trying to learn. So I knew going in that this class would be, would be lost. It would be a waste. Um, other things I learned though, I kind of like this shape. Like <laughs> I'm digging this um, kind of shape and, and I measured out the glass and so now I know how much if I want to try to recreate this I know how much glass I need to put in each one and kind of what size I get from that so I've, I've taken good notes on this because I may want to do this again can you imagine that slumped into a platter I think that would look kind of kind of wicked um, so you know there's some benefit that comes from that uh, I guess I'm going to learn how to repair a kiln shelf so I'm going to work on that a little bit um, and see what I can research to try to patch that um, hole or two that I may have. So that's it. Um, the bottom line or, or my takeaway from this is um, a couple of things. As you're going to do pot melts, think about what the glass is landing on. Is your shelf prepared enough if you're going to do it directly on the kiln shelf? Do you have enough kiln wash on there? Uh, is it fully prepared? Or do you want to drop onto, um, say, a sheet of clear or something, which changes the amount of glass you're using? You have to think about that, but that's certainly an option. Um, and then the other thing to, to uh, for me anyway, the takeaway is I've read all the time, don't kiln wash your pots, your terracotta pots, don't put zip in them. And uh, I just wanted to find out for myself and and here I did. Hopefully you learned something along with me. Hope everybody is um, out there experimenting and having fun. Share your learnings with others. Pass it along. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.